Good morning to all of you. I'd like to welcome those of you who are here in the sanctuary and those of you who are listening or viewing this program and uh, this service. And I, we all recognize the times that we are going through. We, a few weeks ago, a few months ago, we thought that what was happening was something that was outside of us. But the, the events of the last few weeks have reminded us of how global we are as a, as a people. And so we are faced with the present um, uh, situation that we have never seen before and that many people are trying to, to get a grip on. Some of the uncertainty has caused us caused a certain amount of panic, has caused people to, to react in different ways. We see the good coming out and, and, and we recognize that people in these days have really been caring for each other, caring for their communities. We also see the bad some of the hoarding and, and what's happening in terms of our supermarkets uh, remind us of how selfish we are and, and some of us have probably um, um, seen how the shelves have emptied with things that um, emptied of things that some of us really don't need to have anymore and more of. But we also pray that in these days we will have the, uh, the correct approach. We need to be careful, we need to be vigilant, but we also need to be prudent in all of what we do. And so in the middle of all of this, because it's so new, we really don't know what to expect. We don't know how long this situation will last. For us as a church, we have been asked by our bishop and the leadership of our conference to suspend our services for the next two weeks, so this week and next week. I think at the end of next week, we're going to be reevaluating things. And so we pray for guidance for all of us our, our activities here have been scaled down, but we also recognize that there's a certain momentum that we have as a church that we need to continue. And so I'm going to be asking all our leaders to continue to, um, to with their activities, but we may have to make sure that we do things online, we do things by conference call. But I, I want to pray that we continue to exercise the, the wisdom that we think is necessary in these days. Situations are going to change for all of us. And as our bishop said in his letter, um, he reminded us that he recognizes that one size does not fit all. We have, we have, uh, some of us are in different professions, some of us are in different walks of life. It might necessitate us doing different activities that others can't do. But in it all, we pray for each other, we ask that we continue to be supportive of each other. We ask you to reach out to members of the congregation and members of the community and members of your own families who might not be able to go out. Some people, because they have not been able to go out, they may not have some of the staples that they need. And we ask that, we, that the spirit of caring uh, prevail and that we share with each other as much as we can. Now, to sum it all, I really want to leave with us a passage of scripture from the book of Isaiah. The children of Israel were in exile. They had they had heard that maybe God was going to deliver them and the leaders had been saying to them for a long time that God is going to take us out of this situation. But it was a new situation for them. They didn't know what to expect. And so there were some who doubted that God would be with them and some who had just given up on God. And so God spoke to them through the prophet Isaiah. This is what God says. Do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through fire, you shall not be burned, and the flame shall not consume you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. God knows us. God understands what we're going through, and God is going to be with us. And so with that, I leave you with those remarks and pray that you will continue to be supportive of each other because God is standing with us. Amen. Amen. I'm going to invite now um, um, Sister Hazel Henry to come up to us and read for us the purpose of the United Methodist Women and to lead us in the litany. Today, as uh, many of you know, is United Methodist Women Mission Sunday 
United Methodist Women's Mission Sunday, and so we're, we're trying to make sure that we honor that as well. Sister Hazel. Let us stand and join in the purpose and the litany of the United Methodist Women. The purpose. The organized unit of United Methodist Women shall be a community of women whose purpose is to know God and to experience freedom as whole persons through Jesus Christ to develop a creative, supportive fellowship, and to expand concepts of mission through participation in the global ministries of the church. And now the litany. God of mission, you remind us this morning once again to seek your kingdom first. God of abundant living, you call us to steep our lives in your initiatives. God of infinite provisions, you tell us not to worry about missing out and promise us that you will take care of our everyday concerns. God of grace, you summon us back to your kingdom as the goal and purpose of our lives. God out of faith, hope, and love, you fit your daughters and sons for various activities for the sake of your mission. Most holy God, you call us to live out your gospel through your word and deed, by public and personal witnesses, through acts of charity and words of mercy. O oh God of mystery, we are constantly surprised by the working of your Spirit in our midst. O oh oh Holy Spirit, Spirit continue, continue to guide us as we offer ourselves to your belief and, and commit ourselves, ourselves to work for the reign of God here and in the far. In the name of one eternal God, Jesus the Christ, our Savior. Amen. Please be seated. And we have as our guest speaker today, Deaconess Linda Douglas Smith. And I'd like to take a moment to give her a brief introduction. Deaconess Linda Douglas Smith was raised in New York specifically Harlem, USA. She was educated in New York and received her Bachelor's of Arts degree from the College of New Rochelle. She continued her studies at the famous, diverse, and multi-faith New York Theologi Theological Seminary, where she received a Master's of Divinity degree. Deaconess Douglas Smith has served on numerous committees in the church. Additionally, she served as editor of the Metropolitan District newsletter, The Metro Liner. Currently, her education is in clinical pastoral education with a chaplaincy at Calvary Hospital in the Bronx. On behalf of Reverend Noel Chin, Myra Dixon, President of United Methodist Women First Church and the entire First Church congregation, we want to say welcome. Amen.
Good morning. Good morning. Um, please join me in the prayer of illumination. Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of the Holy Spirit, that as the scriptures are read and your word proclaimed, you may hear in joy what you say to us today. Amen. The Old Testament lesson is taken from Exodus 13, verse 17 to 22, found on page 60 of the Pew Bible. The Pillar of Cloud and Fire. When Pharaoh let the people go, God did not lead them by way of the land of the Philistines, although that was nearer. For God thought, if the place far, if the place far away, they may change their mind and return to Egypt. So God led the people by the roundabout way of the wilderness toward the Red Sea. The Israelites went up out of the land of Egypt, prepared for battle. As Moses took with him the bones of Joseph, who had required a solemn oath of the Israelites, saying, God will surely take notice of you, and then you may carry my bones with you from here. They set out for, from Sukkot and camped in Ethan on the edge of the wilderness. The Lord went in front of them in a pillar of cloud by day to lead them along the way, and in a pillar of fire by night to give them light, so that they might travel by day and by night. Neither the pillar of cloud by day nor the pillar of fire by night left its place in front of the people. Here is the reading of the Old Testament lesson. Amen. Amen. The gospel lesson is taken from John 8, verses 12 to 20, found in page 110 of the Pew Bible. Um, if you are able, please stand for the reading of the gospel. Jesus, the light of the world. Again, Jesus spoke to them, saying, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Then the Pharisees said to him, You are testifying on your own behalf. Your testimony is not valid. Jesus answered, Even if I testify on my own behalf, my testimony is valid because I know where I have come from and where I am going. But you do not know where I come from or where I am going. You judge by human standards. I judge no one. Yet even if I do judge, my judgment is valid. For it is not I alone who judge, but I and the Father who sent me. In your law it is written that the testimony of two witnesses is valid. I testify on my own behalf, and the Father who sent me testifies on my behalf. Then they said to him, Where is your Father? Jesus answered, You know neither me nor my Father. If, if you knew me, you would know my Father also. He spoke these words while he was teaching in the treasury of the temple. No, but no one arrested him because his hour is our not yet come. Aaron's reading of the gospel. Thanks be to God. Amen. And now we have Brother Guy to give us a musical selection. Please be seated.
in life when nights are long and cold. In sadness, you are the laughter that shatters all my fears when I'm all alone. Your hand is there. Then I got a text 
asking, could I come to the church for the live stream? Yes, absolutely, I can come to the church. So um, I thank you so much to the United Methodist Women for this invitation um, to be your speaker this morning in such a time as this. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. God, we need to hear from you. We need a word from you. If we don't hear from you, what will we do? Wanting you more each day, show us your perfect way. There is no other way that we can live. Just as I am no tossed about with many a conflict, many a doubt, fightings and fears within, without. Oh, Lamb of God, I come, I come. Amen. My question this morning is, are we missing God in all of this? I know it says be a lighthouse for Jesus, but like I said, when I got the call, I stopped preparing and things changed. Things went, and then when I got another call, things went in another direction. So, are we missing God in all of this? Yeah. For the last several weeks and days, it has been hard to avoid the news. Whether the newspaper, the television, on your tablets, your cell phones, whether Android or Apple, or whatever device you have that is updating you on what is going on here in New York City and around the world. With the coronavirus or COVID-19, it's all around us. Both public and private schools from nursery to universities are closed in various places. With their programs canceled, U.S. students are returning home from those programs aboard, abroad due to the virus. The public library is closed. Many nursing homes are not allowing residents to have visitors. Non-essential travel has been stopped. Airlines have modified, suspended, and canceled flights. Visits to the state prisoners in New York and New Jersey are canceled until next month. Amtrak canceled the non-stop.